well, I would like to start by welcoming everyone to the session. Uh, a big thank you first and foremost to Seafood Nutrition Partnership for having me here with you today. And I also want to want to thank Vital Choice for this beautiful Chilean sea bass that we'll be working with today. My name is Shamira Robinson. I am the Director of Nutrition at the American Diabetes Association, and today we are cooking it up. So before I even jump in, one thing I need you to know is I am all about engagement. I need feedback. I need the chat booming so that we can talk through this together. So I want you to envision that you're in the kitchen with me. Or you can envision yourself in your own kitchen, but either way, we are all in this together. Now, the reason why I am so excited to be able to do this today is because we talk so much about the benefits of seafood. And while that's the case, I like to take that information and to translate it into that practical piece. So as professionals and as practitioners, we have this wealth of knowledge. In there's a disconnect between the knowledge that we have as far as the benefits of our foods and the actual consumption of those foods, right? So people might know that certain things like seafood are great for them. And they may know that they should be eating those things at least two times a week. But there's a disconnect because it's not happening. And we know that seafood consumption is lower than we would like to see. So I want to hear from you all. What are some of those barriers or some of those reasons that people list that they might not be eating seafood as often? All right. Anything that you've heard from patients, from uh, consumers, constituents, even family members? All right, I'm leaning here to see affordability. Yes, a big thing. We have taste. Exactly. Oh, it's coming. I love it, guys. I love it. I love it. Expensive. So yes, thinking about cost, that is a big barrier, especially during this time of COVID-19, when a lot of people may not have the same access to foods, they might not have the same resources, or they might be struggling with employment during this time. Taste and texture, of course. And another big one that I see is time. So people having the time to be able to bring a meal to the table, especially if it's not a go-to. So if someone is not used to eating fish or used to eating seafood, how do they prepare that quickly in a way that their entire family will be able to enjoy? So we are jumping in and we are going to talk about a few quick and easy ways to bring seafood, specifically this Chilean sea bass, to the table, no fuss, minimal ingredients, time to make it happen. So the first thing we are going to be experimenting here with is a chili lime Chilean sea bass. Okay, so for us to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is put a little bit of oil on our fish here. And I am just going to brush that in a bit. And the only thing that we are using today is this chili lime rub. So what is in the rub? I have added some chili powder here. You'll also have garlic powder. You'll have smoked paprika, a little pinch of cayenne, a pinch of salt, oregano, and some lime zest. Now, as far as quantities, how I like to think about this is the way you season your food is a reflection of your personality. So if you are spicy and bold and love a kick of flavor, then definitely go heavy on the cayenne and chili pepper, uh, chili powder there. Um, and that's what I like to do. Okay, now I'm making a mess, of course. So we sprinkle that on here. And so the fish is ready to go. Now, how are we cooking it? How are we preparing it? If you give me one second, We have already had our cast iron heating up in the oven. So we are broiling the sea bass today. So what you do is put the oven on broil and you can leave your cast iron in there so it can get nice and warm. Once you season your fish, you can place that right in the cast iron. And what we have to go with it 
are some French green beans. Now these are fresh French green beans. However, we can use whatever we have at our disposal. So whether you have some frozen green beans, whether you have regular green beans, haircuts, berries, French green beans, whatever it is, you can use those. So make it work. We are in the business of making it work. So I'm just going to take, add some of those green beans to the pan there. Add a little bit of olive oil to the cast iron pan. And you take that same seasoning, that same rub, and you can sprinkle it right on those green beans. So everything gets that same flavor. And what I like to do here, we added lime zest to that rub, but you can also take some slices of lime and put them right in the cast iron with everything else so that those flavors, that citrus, that burst of citrus gets into not only the fish, the sea bass, but also the green beans. So the oven is ready to go. It's already on broil. We are going to put this in here. Now, after broiling for about 10 minutes, you can go ahead and take that same dish out of the oven. And as you'll see here, can you all see this okay? Let's see if I can make this work. So in that pan, you have your green beans and that sea bass, and you see it has that beautiful coating on there, that nice rub. So it's a burst of flavor that is so intense, but again, it's all a reflection of your personality. So if you want to tone it down a bit and not go as spicy, then you don't have to use as much of those things. But super simple, we made that one spice rub of different spices that people might typically tend to have in their cabinet, sprinkled it over everything. 10 minutes later on broil, we are ready to go. I'm just checking in to see what every, okay, love your cast iron, I see you, Valerie. Okay, you make it work. Of course, we have to use what we have to make it work, especially during these times. So, dish number one, we have our broiled chili lime sea bass with those green beans. That is out of the way. So we're moving that to the side. And we're gonna make a transition here. What do we have next? Okay, so the next thing we are making is a sheet pan meal. And we're keeping it nice and easy with an herb roasted Chilean sea bass with a mix of butternut squash and Brussels sprouts. Now, the key thing that I want to focus on here is that you don't have to go as heavy on the seasonings to still get flavor into your food. So you can focus on a mix of different herbs to bring that flavor out and make something that you can really enjoy. So today we're focusing on thyme as the herb that we are using. So we have a mix of our thyme and some minced garlic here. One clove of garlic. We're going to take a lemon Squeeze that in there to get some lemon juice, again, to add that citrus, because that's another way to increase the flavor without necessarily having to add salt to our food. So we're all about flavor, and that doesn't have to mean salt. That can mean different flavors. So showing and teaching people how to incorporate different flavors into their foods so they're not dependent on salt. You know, it's not our fault. Sometimes what we learn and what we've seen it's easier to just go with, oh, well, I know that's a good way to add flavor, so let me do that. And it is our job as practitioners, professionals, people in this field to be able to give ways, practical ways to still make food taste good, to have flavor, to make it something that's easy and accessible. So something that's not taking a bunch of time and doing it with minimal ingredients and keeping costs in mind. Okay, so we've added our, li our uh, lemon juice to the thyme and the garlic. The next thing we want to do is add a drizzle of olive oil to that mixture. All right, and we're gonna stir this up. Let me grab a spoon here. You would think I would know where my spoons are. So we're gonna stir that up to make sure it's all mixed in. 
and we are going to get ready to season our sea bass once again. So what I want to start with, a pinch of salt. Next, we have a pinch of pepper. I like it spicy. Again, personality coming out, a pinch of pepper. We're going to put that on there. And the only thing we want to do is to spoon this mixture of thyme, minced garlic, olive oil, and lemon juice right onto our fish. Okay. So we have that. Boom. Seasoning done, ready to go. So now we can start moving to our sheet pan. So I have a, sheet, a baking sheet lined with parchment paper here. The first thing I'm going to do is take this beautiful sea bass and put it on right there. And another thing that I like to do, you have the lemon, we don't want to do, we don't want to waste food. So use every part that you can. So yes, we've added lemon juice to that herb mixture, but if you just take slices of lemon and put them right on top, that'll help to further infuse the flavor. And then a little thyme garlish, garnish for as it bakes, that's ready to go. Next, our veggies. Of course, we have to have beautiful fall veggies. We are moving into the fall season, and it's great to focus on vegetables as they're in season because a lot of times those are much cheaper. And so you can find them more readily at your grocery store, at your farmer's market, whatever your shopping preferences is. preference is. Okay, so I've added some oil to our veggies there, and the only thing that we need to do is sprinkle them on our baking sheet. Now I've gone heavy on the Brussels and a little lighter on the butternut squash, simply because I want that emphasis on the non-starchy vegetables. All of this is a well-balanced, delicious meal, but really focusing on those non-starchy vegetables is something that we wanna consider, especially if you are working with or marketing to people living with diabetes. So we're not gonna add all of these because it's important that they have space. If we want to get a nice, beautiful roast on those veggies, they need to have breathing room in the pan. So they want a social distance as well. They want maybe not six feet, but a couple centimeters at least. So we've got those on the pan. To roast these, we are turning our ovens to 425. And they will need to be in there for 10, 15 minutes, depending on the size of your filet. So we have about a three to four ounce filet here. And so I'm going to put this in the oven at 425 for 15 minutes. Okay, as I am bringing this out, I wanna hear in the chat, what are some of your favorite fall vegetables? Let's see. Yes, the sim simplicity of the recipe, of course. Squash, oh, I see a squash there. All right, pumpkins, butternut squash, butternut squash. Brussels sprouts, acorn squash, oh, a lot of winter squash. I see sweet potatoes, Brussels sprouts, awesome. And so that's something that's great about this recipe. And so here we have our finished product here. I don't know how well you all can see, but you have those beautiful roasted vegetables. What I did not show is that with some of that time that I have remaining, I just sprinkle that over the butternut squash and the Brussels sprouts as well to infuse that flavor throughout the dish. And I don't know how close I can get for you all to see this sea bass, but what I will say is it's simple easy, minimal ingredients, but packed with flavor. And when I first made it, I had to give myself a pat on the back. I was like, oh, this, this looks and feels and tastes like something that you might get at a restaurant. However, it didn't take long at all. It didn't take much for me to prepare. And it's something that is delicious. There you go. So trying my best to, to give you a good visual here. And now kind of plate a little bit more of this just to give you 
give you a feel of it. But again, so the focus here is finding easy ways for people to do the things that they may already recognize are good for them to do. So yes, we recognize the benefits of seafood. You recognize the benefits of our non-starchy vegetables, our starchy vegetables and whole foods and how those contribute to our health. But how do we take that from just the knowledge and understanding and actually get in the kitchen and do something that is easy for everyone to do? So. Thank you all for joining me today. I am here for questions and cleanup. So if anybody wants to help me on that part, I would love the assistance. But if you all have any thoughts, any comments, anything that you would like me to share, then I am here for that. And I know that we were talking a lot about research today. So before we close out, if you are looking for more information on the benefits of seafood, the benefits of omega-3s, especially as we're discussing people living with diabetes, then some great resources that I want to offer to you that ADA produces will be our standards of care and our nutrition consensus report that was published last year. So both of those resources are available and they talk about nutrition recommendations for people living with diabetes. And before I close out, I just want to see if there's anything Okay, Twitter or IG. All right, Liz. So if you are looking for me on social media, then you can find me at Shamira underscore RDN. That's S-H-A-M-E-R-A underscore RDN. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining me for quick and easy. I'm all about quick and easy and easy cleanup as well. Because look, one, one sheet pan, that's all we have. We plate that and it can look several different ways, but we plate it up and get rid of it and it's ready to go. So thank you for joining me. I will just say that while we have these foods, you see that some things I didn't use all of the ingredients for, like I still have some left over. And these are meals that are also easy to repurpose. So for instance, you have your chili lime Chilean sea bass. That's something that pairs well with chickpeas. You can do a brown rice. You can also put it on a slider and have it ready to go like that. And for our Brussels sprouts, you can make a shaved Brussels sprout salad, add some roasted butternut squash to that, and just top it with that herb roasted fish as well. So there's so much that we could do with so little. And I just encourage you all to keep that focus, keep ease, simplicity and affordability in mind as we're going forward in working with people living with diabetes or otherwise to consume more seafood and just more nutritious foods overall. Thank you everyone. All right, I see a few of you are still hanging out. So I am going to work to read some comments here. So we have some thanks. Thank you everyone for joining me. I really appreciate it. I hope you had fun. I hope you had fun joining me in the kitchen. And if you do go and try some of these recipes, please show me, tag me, let me know. I, I'm proud of them. I've tasted them. I've had other people test taste them. So I think, I think we're good to go. I think they're great. <laughs> Yes, of course, making things look simple and easy. That is what it's all about. If it looks overwhelming before we even get to the point of entering the kitchen, there's no way that people are going to want to or feel comfortable doing it. So the easier that we can make things appear or just make not even appear, the easier that we can make things, the better. Where are the recipes posted? So I will coordinate with the Seafood Nutrition Partnership team to provide the recipes so that they, they can share those recipes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Trying to keep it fun. I told you the way you season your food is a reflection of your personality. So I like to keep it spicy. I like to keep it uh, engaging. I like to keep it I wouldn't say loud. I'd say more like um, vibrant. Vibrant is a great word. Uh, so again, if you're looking for my Instagram, that is Shamira, S-H-A-M-E-R-A -E underscore R-D-N. Lively. I love that, Kim. Thank you. Yes, lively. Lively personality, lively seasonings, 
with ease, with ease. So ease in everything that we do. Thank you, Liz. Oh, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. This has been so much fun. And you see how it's so quick, how quick everything is. Um, one thing for me is during this time, during the pandemic, sometimes it's a lot. There's a lot to think about, a lot to manage. And some days the last thing I want to do is exert a lot of energy, figuring out what to make and making it. And, you know, as I think about it, specifically thinking about people living with diabetes who are also managing so much is, is a whole thing in itself. But then managing that during a pandemic and still trying to find ways to take care of yourself. That's why I'm so passionate about finding things that are simple, easy, and quick to do. Because I know for me, there are many days I don't even feel like getting in the kitchen. So if I can create and find ways to share recipes that don't take a lot, that don't take a lot of ingredients, don't take a lot of time, don't take a lot of resources. So like not a lot of kitchen appliances, anything like that. The simpler, the better. Keep it simple. Simplicity is key. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's so big for me in my life. And I know a lot of people can relate to that. All right, I will hang out here for a little while longer. So if you all have any questions, any comments, if you want to connect with me, please just let me know. We can, we can talk for a little bit until they kick me off. <laughs> Okay, well, let's see. Are there any alternatives for people who don't keep parchment on hand? Yes, so you can use foil if you have foil. Uh, you can just use the baking sheet. So if you kind of grease that baking sheet with some oil or if you use a cooking spray, whatever that is, uh, you can use that to roast the veggies and that is perfectly fine. Now, there may be a little bit more to the cleanup process. So if some of those things start to stick, it may take a little bit of scrubbing to get them off, but that's no big deal. What other fish would I recommend in these recipes? Yes, so that's a great question because sea bass is not something that's always accessible for people, especially depending on where you live. So because of that nice uh, meaty, buttery uh, texture and flavor that it has, some things that can compare that you might be able to find more readily in your grocery store, in your local area. Uh, thinking about thick uh, pieces of fish would be your best bet. So if you have some cod that you would like to try that with, both seasonings will stand up very well to that. Sable fish, uh, halibut, salmon, I think those are all some go-tos that I would easily swap both recipes with. Wild Alaska Pollock, yes, yes, another one that would stand up really well to those flavors. And as far as vegetables, so I know there are a lot of you in the group who really enjoy the winter squash and really enjoy Brussels sprouts, but I'm gonna be honest, while I love them with all of my heart, they're not for everybody. Uh, it might be a tougher hill to climb to convince some people to eat Brussels sprouts and to convince some people to eat butternut squash, especially if you're not familiar with it. So there are also vegetables that you can swap there too. A good mix for the butternut squash and Brussels sprouts that I would recommend as a swap would be sweet potatoes and broccoli. I think those are a little bit more familiar for most people. And if not, they might be a little bit more willing to try those things. So swapping those, uh, those veggies, those fall veggies for sweet potatoes and broccoli would be another really great thing to do. I will say because the fish only takes about 15 minutes to roast, we want to cut those things into small pieces. So I don't know if you noticed, but for my butternut squash, it's like almost a dice there. And with the Brussels sprouts, I quartered them and I wanted to make sure to keep those pieces small so everything could cook at the same time. 
Yes, it's always good to have choices. And as you guys heard me say, make it work. So whatever you have in your local area at your store, there's a way to make it work. You know, cooking is all about being open to experimenting, trial and error, trying things. And so even if there's a fish that you want to try that maybe I didn't suggest as a swap, try it and see what happens. What is the worst? I don't know about the worst, but what, you know, if anything, it might come out and you might learn that either you'd like to try a different flavor profile, that it's not for you, or that you want to try it with something else. So I encourage you to get out there and to try it and to encourage the people if you are a practitioner working with people and trying to engage them and help them to consume more seafood than trial and error. Yes, and thanks for that, Andrea. For anyone who is interested, I know I mentioned the standards of care from ADA in our nutrition consensus report, which really outlines nutrition recommendations for people living with diabetes. But we also have a one pager with Seafood Nutrition Partnership. And so it looks like there is a, I can't see the full thing, but hoping a link. If not, we can certainly get you the link to that that really discusses the benefits of seafood as it relates to diabetes. All right, thank you everyone. I know it's been a little bit of a whirlwind. We covered a lot of grounds. I wanted to show you how you could make some quick and easy meals. And so I hope that was helpful. If for you, for your family, for the people that you're working with or the people that you talk to on a regular basis, I would love all of your feedback. Any questions or comments, concerns, you can find me outside of this via email, social media. I will be happy to connect with you. So lots of fun in the kitchen. Thank you for joining me. And until next time, bye everyone.